Okay, yes, yeah, so um, if you can't read, top tips for young learner teachers. Um, so today what we're going to be looking at very shortly um, is we're going to be looking at classroom management, the layout of the young learner classroom, uh, student motivation, and maintaining student interest in your classes, okay? Uh, materials to use with uh, young learners and uh, motivating teenagers through the use of games and activities with some ideas. Uh, ten ways to introduce lessons, so some practical ideas as well as the games and activities. And uh, online resources, um, so quite a bit. And any questions at the end, um, if, you, if we have time, <laughs> hopefully. But there, there's quite a bit. Any questions yet? No, oh, okay. All right, I love the fact that everyone's decided to sit back apart from two at the front. It's brilliant. Okay, thank you. <laughs> All right, um, okay, so let's get started. Um, classroom management. Yeah, you, you, might like, you might look like this at the end of a class. It depends. Um, what I'd like you to do before, we, before I tell you about classroom management is to discuss it yourself, okay? Um, and I'd like you to maybe turn around or turn to the person next to you and discuss these questions. Um, there are, if you can read them, I believe four, five, do it again? Six. <laughs> Six questions. Okay. Um, feel free to come up if you can't see them and then relay to your, your partner and discuss these questions together. I'll give you a bit of time. All right. All right, two minutes. <laughs> Go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, perfect. I've got your attention. Um, one thing I like to do is when I put my hand up, I try and get my students to put their hands up, and then all of a sudden everyone puts their hands up, and they're, they're wondering what's coming next. Um, so if you see my hand up, just put your hand up. And OK, um, all right, let's throw it out then. Um, how are students organized in your class? Do you allow them to sit um, next to someone they choose? Anyone? At the beginning. At the beginning? Okay. Yeah, at the beginning. How, how are they usually organized in class? I guess nationality groups will often try and sit together, so you try to separate them out. OK, all right, nationality um, groups. Yes, okay. Um, what about the, the, the uh, default room arrangement? Uh, do you have a, a, a room arrangement, a bit like over there? It's like a, a sort of office yes, style that, arrangement. That, that is our default because these rooms are quite long but narrow. Yes. Especially this side of the building rather than that side of the corridor. Uh -huh. So they're all pretty much teachers at the front and printing tracks whiteboard. Uh -huh. And it's like a boardroom meeting style. Yes. And so the, the students are side on to the teacher. Yes. Uh, you can't really change it. Like you can't really change it. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else from other schools? Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. yeah the, horseshoe. the horseshoe. All right. And yourself? Oh, we have horseshoe usually, but I tend to arrange teenagers in circles, like separate out into groups, so that they like are more than close to one independent learning. Okay. So you put them in little islands. Little yeah, okay, great. All right. Um, we're going to be looking at uh, different classroom layouts, okay? Now, I'm going to get you to sit on the floor for this activity. <laughs> and we're going to move the chairs aside, okay? Um, we've got 20 people here, so you're going to be in a group of four, okay? Um, how about you choose someone you've not met before? OK, and uh, so I'll give you two minutes to move the chairs quietly to the side. Go to a small group, a little small island, sit in a little circle, OK? <laughs> I'm glad I'm not wearing OK, perfect. All right. Um, 
let's hope they swept the floor. Okay. Um, all right, now I've got some pictures of different classroom layouts, and I'm going to give one picture to each group, all right? I'm also going to give you some descriptions, and a typical activity that I like to do is to try and match the pictures to the descriptions, all right? So uh, each of you will have picture and description. Try and match the pictures and descri uh, yeah, descriptions together, okay? Are you ready? Yes, okay, woohoo. All right. So, Okay, I'll give you two minutes, two minutes left, okay? Try and match them as much as possible. Okie dokie, all right, if you stop there. <laughs> Perfect, there's one, <laughs> two. <laughs> All right, uh, I'm going to make your life easier, so I'm going to give you the pictures and the descriptions, okay? All right, so you can check your answers for a few minutes. The next step is obviously to put the chairs back if you can. Thank you very much. Thank you. You were so quiet whilst you were doing it. It was brilliant. Obviously, when, when you're dealing with teenagers and younger learners and that, um, trying to keep noise to a bare minimum is uh, quite challenging sometimes. Um, so here are some ideas that you could use to reduce the, the, the silence of moving things around in the classroom. Um, you could uh, agree with the learners, you know, like have a competition. So it's like, OK. Everyone try and move everything out of the way as quietly as possible, starting now, and then see how, if they make any noise or not. Um, you know, you could teach them to lift things rather than dragging things out of the way. And um, you could get volunteers to do certain things. So Alice, you take the chairs, OK. Sebastian, you take the tables and, you know, uh, get little groups organized with uh, various responsibilities. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you could move all the learners to the side of the room while you choose to do the things. Um, um, and you could stage all the rearrangements. Uh, one thing that I like to do is to do bit by bit. So, for example, um, I didn't ask you to collect all the papers and move the chairs all at once. I, I tried to stage it. And um, particularly with young learners, it's like, OK, everyone, get here. And then it's like, bang, 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 loads of noise, and eh, we're here. Um, but instead, you could stage it so you could get groups of students. So, like, you four stand up, thank you. All right, come forward. Okay, you four stand up, thank you. Move forward. So, if you stage it that way, the 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 the, the noise is reduced as much as possible, um, and it's more manageable as well. Okay. All right. Any questions? No, I'm boiling. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> okay. Uh, what we're going to do? I like this. In students. Okay, um, I'm going to give you five ideas that you could do to try and pair students together. Okay, and I'm going to try and give you some ideas and uh, do some practical things. Okay, so I think one of the tasks that we're going to do, I'm going to try and get you paired up with someone else that you're not sitting next to. Okay, all right, and the uh, first one you probably know of, you could rearrange students by height. So shortest to tallest. Um, students might feel really uh, unhappy being the shortest student in the class. Or you could do it by age. Um, or you could do it by uh, the color of the socks or something like that. OK. OK. Um, binomial pairs. OK. So st pairing students up with the beginning, like far, and then another student has and wise. Sorry, and wide. I am a teacher. <laughs> All right, far and wide, etc. Um, we're going to try this out, OK? Are you ready? Yeah, some are a bit, yeah. Uh, OK, I'll, I'll explain again. 
Okay. So one student, one person here, will have the beginning of a binomial pair, and another student, or someone here, will have a, um, another ending of the binomial pair. Okay. And I've got about 10 all cut up. And you have to try and find your partner. So those starting with the binomial pair and those ending with the binomial pair. OK. Understandable? All right. Are you ready for this? Yeah? OK. All right. OK, good. What I'd like you to do is stand up very quietly, find your partner. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, so um, that's one idea that you could use. You could. Right, okay, it's one idea you could use uh, just getting some lexical items and getting students to match them together. Okay. Um, vocabulary uh, pairing. Um, so you could like uh, have uh, antonyms, synonyms, or something like that. Um, sentence halves usually quite good for conditionals. Um, so you have the start of the sentence; they have to match it with the uh, end of the sentence. Uh, random names out of a hat; just draw them out. Um, I think that's it. Yeah. So, so five ideas. Um, do you have any ideas yourself with regards to pairing students up? Any interest? Yeah. Use Triptico. Use trip Triptico. Online, they have a Oh, right. OK. Triptico. Yeah, so triptico.com. Oh, I can't remember exactly. OK. I'll have to Google it. Discuss these five questions together with your new partner. OK. Um, sorry, six questions. I'll give you. It says five minutes here. I'll give you about four or five minutes, okay? All right. If you can see it. Wow, brilliant. I'll have you salivating by the uh, wall next when I ring a bell. Okay, um, great. Okay, so number one, how would you normally motivate learners to participate in class? Uh, anyone? Anyone, anyone, Choosing anyone? Something which they're interested in. Choosing something they're interested in. Oh, you're okay, you're okay. Uh, good. okay. All right. Um, what different forms of motivation are you aware of? Anyone? At the front? Intrinsic and extrinsic. Okay. <laughs> it's not a test. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, how do you normally interest students in the lessons? Personalize it. Yeah. Use tech. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to look at something a bit more practical now to try and tap into that in extrinsic motivation, trying to get students in, interested in their lessons. And we're going to be looking at games and activities for young learners. Um, and again, I've got some questions, six questions. What's the time? OK, it's quarter past. OK, I'll give you th three minutes, three minutes to discuss these questions with your partner. Start in now. Great, okay. All right, um, anyone, how often do you play games in the classroom? All the time. Yeah. 
<laughs> and your students love you all the time. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, do you think long? Um, do you think young learners should play more games than adult learners? Why or why not? Y yes. Because children learn through play anyway, and uh -huh. it keeps them motivated and engaged, so they don't know they're learning. Okay. Anyone agree or disagree? Thumbs up. Yes. Good. All right. Yay. All right. Okay. Um, do you have any favourite games? Anyone? Any favourite games? Yes. I have never. I have never. Yeah. So the present perfect, and it's if you've done something, um, you've got to think of something that nobody else has done. Or sorry, wait. You've got to get it right. <laughs> you say I have never, and you say something you've never done, but you think everyone else has done, and everyone else has done it has to stand up. It's uh, a drinking game. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's without the alcohol. All right. Okay. Yeah. I can imagine it after a couple of shots, you, uh, people have difficulty standing up. An example is like, I have never uh -huh. eaten pizza, I've never been to Italy, I've never swum with dolphins, those kind of things. Ah, okay, and then those that haven't done it, they stand up. Those that have done it have to stand up. Those that have done it stand up, okay, yeah. and those remaining seated, are they out of the game or are they? Um, it's just about getting... As, it's either about getting as many people to stand up as possible or getting no one to stand up. It depends on the situation. Uh, okay, and I suppose is the winner the one with everybody standing up or sitting down? Yeah, either way. Either so, way. Wow, well, nobody's standing up. Basically, got... so you're making the rules up. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. It depends on the class. Yeah. Okay, all right. It depends on their age and what's appropriate and that kind of stuff. It's a nice get to know you activity as well, isn't it? Hmm, mm, I might. I might nick that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um, uh, what was the last game that you used in the classroom? Hangman. Hangman. Yeah. Back to the board. Back to the board. Wow. The classics, eh? Okay. Do you have any? Uh, do you have pat particular games for particular parts of the lesson? I think noughts and crosses, where you're revising vocabulary five minutes at the end of the lesson or five minutes at the start to review book kind of mm -hmm. it's quite good and you can have say a big team against a big team it's the competitive thing which drives it yes uh, okay yeah prefixes or something like that suffixes or whatever it may be yes interesting okay all right um what do you think of the benefits of games in class <gasps> stealth learning stealth learning uh, yeah feel yeah. good factor yeah, feel good factor yeah Mm -hmm. Recharge yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. I'm going to be looking, uh, well, I'm going to show you 10 games and activities again, a bit of a practical element to it. So um, a bit later, I'm going to ask you to sit in a big circle, um, but not just yet. Anyway, um, 10 games that I tend to use. Noughts and crosses. Um, now, like Alistair mentioned, looking at vocabulary. But uh, I'm going to do it in the style of a pub quiz. OK? And you've got your partner. And you choose a square, one to nine. And you say, OK, it's going to be five. And your noughts. I'm going to show a question up on the board. And if you're correct, you draw a nought in. If you're incorrect, Nothing, I'm afraid. And then you carry on. And if you get a correct answer, you get a naught or a cross. You choose the number in the grid, OK? All right, so one between two, yeah? There we go. OK, everyone's got one? OK, um, all right, so perhaps you could do rock, paper, scissors, and the one that's the winner can start first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Okay. First question. First question. So you choose the number. Are you ready to choose the number? 
Yeah? All right. First question. Okay, you got... Quick, you got 10 seconds to choose your answer. Okay. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Answer coming up. So, if you were correct, you do a naught or a cross. Okay, now it's the next person. Okay, next question. <laughs> okay, quick. Five seconds. Ready? Okay. All right. Okay, so obviously you can use it to review vocabulary or, you know, you can you can uh, customize it to, to anything really that you want. Um, so for example, if it's vocabulary, it's like um, odd one out or that sort of thing. And, um, uh, you know, you could use it for young learners or adults. It's up to you. Um, a to Z race. I like this one. Do you know this? Complete silence. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, so basically it's like team A, team B, and you've got, um, you say um, a topic or a, a, a lexical set, and you say like fruit or food, and it's like apple, banana, carrot, duck, egg, frog. What's G? I can't think of one. Never mind, I lose. Well, okay, um, I'd like, let's see, uh, two people, two people, um, two volunteers. Normally, I try and uh, get students in single file, and they pass a pen behind them once they've finished, OK? Um, but we haven't got much space. Are you ready? Yep. Yeah? Uh, OK, body. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we got arm, brain, brain. Forget that. <laughs> Eye, femur, and head. So one, two, three, four, five. In a bit. Okay. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Uh, call my bluff. Any idea what this is? Yeah. Um, who would like to describe the game? Uh huh. Okay, yeah. Um, two lies and a truth. Yeah, or two truths and a lie. Okay, well, yes, you're, you're right, yeah. Um, so you, you can use it for any, any sort of activity. You could use it for vocabulary. I like to use this as a get-to-know-you activity, and I normally put down three sentences. You could put down four or five. It's up to you. And I normally have one false uh, sentence and so for example uh, I, uh, in one sentence I say I've lived in six countries uh, second sentence um, uh, I've been married for 14 years and last sentence I'm 36 years old mm -hmm. and they have to choose the, the false one um, and they usually is the one that's false is my age and then I get them to guess what my age is and um, they don't do too well, unfortunately. <laughs> um, no, but you can, you can customize it to get to know your students. And then I normally get students paired up and write in their own sentences and personalize it. And it's, it's a nice 20-minute activity. OK, pass the paper. Now, what I'd like you to do very quickly is to try and move the chairs around and sit in a circle. 
All right, now I'm going to give you a piece of paper, all right? And you pass the paper, don't throw it, just pass the paper to the person on your right and you keep going round. And when the music stops, you have to finish a sentence, okay? All right, are you ready? Do you throw it? No, good. Do you pass it to the person on your left? No. To your right? Yes. Perfect. All right, good. <laughs> <laughs> Hung over? <laughs> I hope to live in America one day. Very good. Okay. Is that it? That's it. Hey. All right. Uh, okay, another game, Pictionary, um, uh, you give a student a word and they have to draw it and the other students have to guess what it is. Uh, snowball writing, okay, now, um, any idea what snowball writing is? Brilliant, yeah. So, uh, like we did last time, you, um, with the music, you write a question or a student writes a sentence. Uh, it could be creative writing. They scrunch up the piece of paper. You play the music. They throw all the pieces of paper around. You stop the music. They pick one up and they carry on. They answer the question or they carry on writing the story or something like that, yeah? Um, kids love it. Uh, no, let's not try it out. <laughs> um, sentence hangman. Any idea what sentence hangman is? It's hangman with a sentence. Two. Two. T-O. Okay. Number one, two, three, four, five, six. Two. Two, two. Two, two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, another word? Friend. Friend. <laughs> One, two, four, five, six. Six. <laughs> Possessive. Another word? Girlfriend. House, girlfriend, house. Okay, house first. One, two, four, six. 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 Perfect. Very good. Double the points for you. One, two, four. My. Who said my? Okay. One, two, four. 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 Good. I. One, two. Huh? I. I. One, two. One. One. Two. What's in two? Any idea? Went. It's a verb. Went. Went. Very good. Yay. That's it. So um, it's very good for students because it's visual and it's good for um, sentence structure. Anyway, Palmanism, so, you know, I have a flashcard and word and I have to match it and turn it over. Um, <clears throat> uh, Chinese whispers, so lined up in two groups and you show them a word at the back and they have to whisper it through. 20 questions, so there's someone at the front, you show them a, a, a word and they have to answer just yes and no. You ask them questions. Okay, 10 ways to start a lesson. I'm going to be ultra quick. <clears throat> okay, Star Wars scrolling. Okay, you've got um, a website here and you can create a, a nice lesson intro. Um, and lesson one, a new class. It's a new period of new English classes, blah, 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 blah. Rebel students strike in from a distant country or something, yeah? Um, you could get the students to write uh, a story or something like that as well. It's quite, quite good and you get all the music uh, and all. Um, so you can actually edit it and um, add in things, uh, you know, get the students to write a text. It's really engaging. Um, I love it because I love Star Wars.
There we go. Okay. All right. Um, tell a story. Okay. So if you want to introduce some language, um, um, you can try and elicit some language that you use in a story. So you can say, I went to the shop the other day and I bought uh, some new pairs of shoes and oh, they cost an arm and a leg and, you know, I paid 80 quid for them. God, I paid through the nose. Okay. Arm and a leg. What does that mean? Cost an arm and a leg. Very expensive. Pay through the nose. Pay a lot of money, that sort of thing. So you could introduce idioms and that sort of things. Uh, musical guess a topic. What's the link? Okay, picture association to introduce topic. Um, so what's the topic here? You've got four different pictures. Achievements. Experiences. Me and my partner, so you could do a quick uh, how often do you and then you personalize it and get them to chat together and the topic is hobbies and interests. Uh, number six, slow reveal. Are you ready? Okay, I've got a picture here I'm going to show you. Shout out, the first one that thinks they know what it is. Castle. 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 Okay, got there eventually. Okay, good. Guess the word. Ooh. There we go. Planets. Uh, dingbats. What's the topic today? Okay. Science and technology. Okay, we've got a phone. phone. Equation. Equation. What's <laughs> any idea? Uh, it's a bit late. I'm sorry. <laughs> Smartphones. Okay. <laughs> Find someone who. Uh, find someone who is scared of, likes, doesn't like, would like, that sort of thing. Uh, and the topic is fears. And the last one, line by line re uh, reveal. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <sighs> Any ideas yet? <laughs> okay, all right, so the, there's 10 ideas that you could introduce your lessons uh, with young learners or adults, it's up to you. Okay, uh, materials for adolescent learners, uh, okay, let's go through this ultra quick. Okay, um, let's skip the discussion, we don't have five minutes. What I would recommend are some photographable resources for teenagers, adolescents, and here's the selection here with the ISBN. Uh, again, um, I will have the slides ready for you to view so you can refer to this as well. Um, here's some more related to culture and history. Okay. And with regards to a curriculum, I would recommend a curriculum which includes movies, sports, uh, television, technology, um, hobbies, travel, etc., etc. Um, and uh, I, I would look at um, the books that I referred to, look at the contents list, the list of topics within these books. It will give you an idea of the sort of topics kids enjoy looking at, okay? Okay, um, and so for example, I would recommend like a topic-based curriculum. So you have, um, you know, maybe sports one day, uh, holidays the next, and everything else. And then the grammar and the vocabulary is embedded within the topic. Okay. Any questions? No. Nope. Perfect. Okay. Online resources. Um, there are 
some websites here. Again, you can check um, the slides later and you can refer to these. These are probably ones that you know. Uh, and final tips. Um, tip number one, try and develop a strong rapport with the learners that you're teaching. Um, try and plan lessons based on what they're interested in. Okay. Uh, be empathetic, yeah. Um, uh, try and not discourage them in front of their peers. They'll get embarrassed and they won't like you for it. Okay. Um, and uh, try and be yourself in front of the kids as well. Don't, don't try and be too authoritative. Again, just be yourself, you know, and show that you, you have flaws as many, uh, you know, as much as they do. And um, that they'll like you for who you are, in a way. Okay, um, any questions? Is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Sand, yes. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you. Any questions? Yes? So you said this is going to be online? It is online. Shall I show you where it's available online now? Yeah? yeah. yeah? Okay. Now, um, I, I have a, a website here. And whilst I was doing the presentation, I scheduled um, a link for the slides. Um, a post was put up whilst I was busy. Um, and here you will see all the slides. It's available on my website. Uh, the website here is eltexperiences.com. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Um, <coughs> I will put um, a link to this on the Sussex Dosser website. We'll have um, the video up of the session as well. Um, and on the video, there'll be, um, I guess, uh, some of my slides running alongside with the video as well. Okay. All right. Any questions? Mm. Yes. What is um, uh, your advice for, at the moment, I've got a student who is just very reluctant to do anything. It seems to come from some kind of nerves or something uh -huh. like that, but as soon as you engage with it, it's like when you're firefighting, you lose the rest of the class, yeah. the entire energy goes. Uh -huh. Any tips? Any tips, okay. Have you spoken to the student one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. just privately? Yeah. Okay. Um, maybe give them a responsibility to do, to like maybe hand out the, the worksheets, okay. mm -hmm. maybe uh, get them to monitor the students, um, maybe they'll come out of their shell that way. Thank you. Yeah, all right. Any other questions? No. Thank you very much. Thanks for moving. <laughs> Thank you. Um,